relationships. And when I say relationships, I'm not just meaning relation, intimate relationships, but I'm also meaning friendships, um, your people that you're working with, your coworkers, um, people within the community. So relationships, your family relationships. So how important is mental health when it comes to relationships? Anybody like to answer that? Who would like to talk about it a little bit? Um, your children, um, your peers, and also um, it's important to involve them in it when it's um, not trying to be perfect, not trying to put up no standard, but just trying to put up um, an idea of respecting each other, you and your so, in other words, <clears throat> mental health is important when it comes to relationships because sometimes we put standards in our relationships, and if we put these standards, sometimes we can't, we have, we have difficulties meeting those standards in our relationships, and so if we are, we take the opportunity, like you mentioned before, for being involved in our relationships, whether it's with our family or with our children, that it will support our mental health. So, yeah, well said. but also if our standards, sometimes we put our standards too strict mm -hmm. and too low. Okay. Um, whereas we have the opposite of um, knowing what dedication is. It's just like in your mind you think you put up a, 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 a comp, a comp position in your head and not a um, focused relationship. You want, you, you want to maintain that dedication. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing that. Does anybody else want to add to that? Oh, say again. Okay. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> um, I wanted to add to the fact the relations between relationships and mental and mental health. I will say, can I can I speak from a personal story? Yes. Um, so when, during high school, on my end of sophomore year, all junior year, COVID happened, and because of that, my mental health dropped dramatically. I was inside every day doing school from a computer in a room every single day of my life for two years straight and that caused relationships to go down. Uh, I, I feel like mental health can help build relationships but, they can, but the status of it can also destroy them. So for those two years I battled, I battled with a lot of depression and I ended up cutting away a lot of my family and I didn't talk to that many people. But later on, I found something called photography, which I which I quite loved, and it got it forced me to get out of the house and forced me to socialize with people about about the topics. Because when I started, I didn't know anything about photography. I needed help, so I went out and I talked to people, and it allowed me to allowed me to socialize and realize that I can still help. Uh, it allowed me to realize that I can go out and do more things and help my mental health that way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you, you said it just perfectly. And you hit on a lot of things that I was thinking that, you know, I was going to add into as well, some of my other questions. So you're absolutely correct. Is that mental, like, relationships can actually build and they also can not. They can all break your mental health, right, if you're in, in unhealthy relationships. Um, and you're exactly correct about, like, sometimes what happens is that we isolate when we really need to be social, right? That isolation is not healthy at all, as well, right? Um, and sometimes we forget that, and especially if you're like a person like me who's a kind of an introvert, if you really think about it. So introvert people like to be alone, but what we found is that you still have to have social aspect to it. At some point, right? So I like that you brought up all the different things you brought up. I think are wonderful, and thank you so much for sharing that. Thank Good you. job. Good job. Anybody else would like to share about that? Would y'all like to know what the question is? Oh yeah, what's up? Okay, so is it mental health important in relationships? 
Mental health. So how is your mental health and how important is it when it comes to relationships? I think it's incredibly important, you know. Okay. So also, what is this? I mean, we were just <laughs> talking about it. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. So, and, and I'm glad that you all came in because you all are always here at the open mic. So you are like definitely some musicians that we probably want to have on this Thursday evening. Okay. So basically what Voices is, now we hash what Voices is, is it's an opportunity for people to talk about mental health, to talk about psychology, to talk about mental illness if they choose, and to add in the musical concept to it as well as poetry or um, writing if somebody wants to speak something verbally about experience or share, but it's an opportunity to use your voice. <laughs> That's great, yeah. I have a, as you probably know, I mostly freestyle, I more than actually write, uh -huh. but I do have some good um, you know, songs that kind of focus on mental health, so I will definitely bring those at some point. That's, okay. I'm glad to know. What time is this? Like every Thursday? At 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock on Thursdays? Yes. So what do you think um, mental illness and mental health is? To me, I think mental health is, you know, it's pretty much just the quality of someone's life because obviously the brain is controlling everything else going on, so you need a healthy brain to have a healthy body, a healthy spirit, everything following that. So. That's why I would say in a relationship, you know, it could be a relationship with a significant other, it could be a friendship, be a relationship with yourself, with your dog, you know, any relationship you need to have, you know, a basis of mental health because health is everything and your mind is everything. So I think you put those two together, it's important you guys are having a meeting about it, bringing people's awareness of mental health. Yeah, no, I think in relationships especially, humans are very social creatures. So you need to have relationships to have good mental health, and you need good mental health to have relationships. So it's very uh, important to have both. Right. Well said. But yeah, well thank you all for doing this. And like, you're so welcome. This is cool. I know. Yeah. You're welcome. You came right into it. Yeah. Uh, he's going to perform yeah. again, and we okay. want to yes, perform. Yes, actually, you can. Oh, and, um, you we're to after, I'm going to ask like two more, to. three more questions. Uh -huh. And if you want to perform, we uh, open it up to the mic. Anybody? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to add. I'm okay. going to add. Um, I absolutely think mental health um, is vital to all types of relationships. And mental illness is no different than any other illness. If you got a broken leg, you and your friend are walking down the street and you have a broken leg, you can't walk. She or he has to carry you. Yeah. That sometimes, whether we want to admit it or not, sometimes it gets kind of burdensome. Any kind of illness, not, you know. Um, but when you have something in your body that's sick or not 100%, it takes a toll maybe on the next person and on yourself, right? So I don't think it's any different than any other illness as it relates to how bad it is. I think we stereotype mental illness as being really terrible, but it would be the same as if I had heart disease or, you know, or anything else. We would go and get it treated but it does play a part on how you are able to connect to the next person. Absolutely, absolutely. And you brought up something really important too, um, is that you can still have a mental illness and still be mentally healthy, mm -hmm. right? And the vice versa, you can be mentally healthy <laughs> you can still be, 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 well, not be mentally healthy and not have a mental illness, right? So everybody forgets that too because a lot of times we think, okay, well, because a person has mental illness, that means that something is wrong with them, right? No, it does not. As long as it is being treated, which is what the goal is, is to make sure that you are working on your mental health and you're treating it, which is part of mental health, right? So I'm glad that you brought that piece up as well because you're right, absolutely correct about that. And you're also correct about, you said something a second ago, and I'm going to make sure I'm um, not missing that piece. You said something about um, mental illness and relationships. Can you repeat that a second? Can you repeat that part? Um, I think, well, what I was saying is the mental illness is like any other. If the relationship is not strong, it's going to suffer. 
whether it's a mental illness or it's a regular illness, it's going to suffer. And so we do have to work on it. People have to admit it. People have to be honest about it, right? And then you can work on it and it works itself out, I think. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So I have, um, uh, it's also like, um, I've, um, also, oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, when um, you mentioned the song, okay. when you mentioned the part of um, having, you can be me mental healthy and still have a um, mental illness, that's not, that's not personally hiding it, mm -hmm. but the mental illness of you not um, being healthy is that part. You want me to repeat that part? No. Or? Oh, no. I mm -hmm. just, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, repeat that part okay. because the, you can be healthy and still have a mental illness. Right. That's it. Yeah, so you can still be mentally healthy and have a mental illness. Right. right. It's, just, it's just a condition. And right. you're not hiding right. it at all. Exactly, exactly. However, a person also can not be and have good mental health, but not have a mental illness. Like there's not a diagnosable illness. They just not take care of themselves. Right. 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 So that's what I was saying about that. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And that's just not on the professional level. That's on anybody's level. Right. 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 Exactly. So, um, so I guess y'all kind of answered the second question, which was how does your mental health affect your relationships? Does anybody want to elaborate on that a little bit? How does your mental health affect your relationships? So, is there anybody want to share anything that you know about that? Yeah, I'll add on to what I said about. Okay. That. Yes. Um, so, with how it affects my relationships, um, I'll go in a little bit more depth. Uh, since I did online school. Most of the people I interacted with, besides my family, was through a computer screen. And that doesn't seem it doesn't seem like they're real. And to, to some people going going through that, sitting down at a computer for six hours a day, just talking talking and learning through a screen, and not everybody learns the same way. So it's it's gonna be a, some people that can work perfectly fine and that can increase their mental health because they can they can make it better because they may be learning better. That that may make them better. But for a lot of people, that's not, that's just going to make it worse or do nothing. And um, in, between relations, in between relationships, I feel like the fact that personally, when I started pushing some people away, it, it started to affect me mentally and physically. Because I think we mentioned this earlier with mental illness, uh, sorry, not mental illness, uh, mental health and physical health are different, but they're also almost the same, almost the same. They affect each other both very much, but they are still yet different. Like I, when, when I fell into my depression, I was not getting out of the house, and my body, it took a toll on my body. I couldn't get up, I couldn't get up in the morning that easily. I couldn't, I found walking outside very frustrating for myself personally, and it, it can affect both. So what, when you, I understand this workshop is solely, you know, not, not solely, but it's focused towards mental health mainly. If by doing this, it can also help. It can also help your physical health too, because they, they they're both they are honestly both the same and they're both different. Yeah, you got yeah. it. You got it. Because you notice during um, COVID, um, the recommendation was to go outside. They kept saying go outside, get physical, right? We have to get physical. We have to work our bodies, right? We have to have that outdoor activities. It gives you fresh air vitamin D, a bunch of other things that helps you physically. Um, so what I did, I'll give y'all some examples of what I did, and you guys can talk about a little bit about what you all did during this time when we were isolated. Um, I had a set group of friends, and we would get on, we actually really got online, just like we talked about before, and you're right, it doesn't have the same effect, but what we ended up doing was we would have like karaoke, we would do karaoke over <laughs> the internet, do Zoom, we each got a Zoom account and we were all logged in at the same time. We did karaoke, we did like some girl things where we would just like listen to music and just dance around the room, just turn on music, like dancing to the different songs and stuff like that. We had, um, there was a group um, outside of North Carolina 
that I was introduced to like a poetry group. So literally we would get on once a month on Friday, everybody would log in and we would all present poetry and listen to poetry and music at the same time, right? Um, so we did a lot of that and then we would do some outdoor things. I would go, a couple friends that I was real close to that we wasn't, we felt comfortable enough around each other to go out next to each other during COVID. So we would go and do walks in the park, we did the trails. So we did a lot of that and honestly I think that's what got me through COVID. Um, with a lot of transitions. There was a lot of transitions besides just COVID for me. Um, but through that time, that's what helped me maintain my mental health. So anybody else want to share what you did to help during that time? So uh, I'm very fortunate that I have about an acre of land behind my house. And it's not actually owned by, um, you know, like our property, but the people who own it, they're happy with me just going through there, making trails and enjoying it. So I made a lot of trails, kind of following where deer have already made paths. And uh, it was just really nice, you know, just spending a lot of time alone, but having general goals and tasks and uh, burning a lot of the leaves that I would clear and along the paths, picking up all of the fallen branches and having fires. And just, um, I grew up being a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout and always really liked the outdoors. So I kind of got back in touch with that. It was uh, right after I graduated high school when COVID hit. So I was not forced to be at a computer screen. It was nice. I got to finish my school year normally without any restrictions or anything. And so then I just went ahead and, uh, yeah, really got back into fire starting and trailblazing, you could say, and just, just enjoying more time outdoors. So that's my, my big thing. Getting back to nature. I love that. Anybody else want to share? Okay, go ahead. Um, I was fortunate not to catch the COVID because um, I, I don't know it's just like um, I, I I wasn't led to like well actually I was led and not led but I thought working in the mall was like a um, ministry within and um, I had found a old past friend who really needed me. And you know how they say when you in help, you get need. And when you help other people, you grasp up, you know, like the positive things you need help for. So that would, that's what I was led to do. And I, um, I always, like, took every other day, I took my immune system to be had that conversation, keep your immune system um, pills, um, use um, antibacteria um, soap, and also... Um, just clean your face, your face and your feet. And the fr believe it or not, the friend I worked for, we used to have like a um, feet problem <laughs> together. So it was just like me learning from a better thing to keep my health condition much more better. Right. Right, so in other words, and would you say it's a good thing, so in other words, one of the things, and this is also good mental health along with relationships, is helping other people. So that helps you to also become, to remain mentally healthy, because it's, it's like providing opportunity, when you help somebody, it's like you're helping yourself almost, right? Um, so that was a good point that you made. You also talked a little bit about self-care, so taking care of your feet, that was something that you can do to be mentally healthy, it's self-care, I think. I think you mentioned it a second ago about self-care. Um, you, you did, when you said about taking care of yourself. You said that relationship is also yourself, right? Yeah. So relationship is not just people around you, but it's also yourself. Yeah, so people forget that. Relationship, people forget it. You know, it can be with yourself. It doesn't have to be two separate, you know, it's not always. And a lot of the time people say relationship, they think it has to be boyfriend, girlfriend. I mean, every friend, everybody you know from any anything, you know, everyone has relationships. 